Hi all, my name is Jack. Thank you so much for clicking on this video. I need to get a few things out of the way before we get into the meat and potatoes of the video. First things first, I would like to give a big thank you to Archery Country in St. Cloud for allowing us to film on their location. If you're ever in the area, be sure to stop by and check out their selection. Second thing is all the bows were tested at a 26 inch draw length and at 70 pounds. Now most likely you're going to have a different draw length than I am. So what I did is I put some videos in the description box below of other reviews of the bows. That way you can kind of cross reference it. And lastly, this is actually going to be a three part series. So the first part here is all the new 2021 men's bows. I tested out the Matthews V327 and 31 the Hoyt Ventum 30, the Botex Solution Short Draw, the Prime Nexus 2, and the Elite Encore. So that's six bows in total. In the next video, my wife is actually going to be testing out the new women's bows of the year. So she tests out the Mission Switch, the Botex Iwasaki Gen 2, the Matthews Prima, and the Hoyt Eclipse. So the last part of the video series is where my wife and I are going to be sitting down and actually talking about the bows individually. And we're going to talk about what we liked and didn't like about each bow. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that because we have quite a few different opinions on each of the bows. So again, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Kick back and enjoy. All right, all, we're gonna get started with this bow comparison and we're gonna get started with the new Hoyt Ventum 30. So Hoyt did a lot of things to change up this bow this year. Um, it's completely different other than maybe the riser. The riser is very reminiscent of their old Hoyt Factor, but they made a ton of different changes with the bow, including um, the cam system, which is the biggest change. Instead of going with their cam and a half system, they're actually um, going with a binary cam system. Now what I'm thinking this is gonna do, this is gonna smoothen out the draw cycle a little bit and also really um, firm up that back wall. That was a big bugaboo for them in the past. Before I shoot any of these bows, I'm gonna run down the individual specs of these ones. So for the Hoyt Ventum 30, it's 30 inches axle to axle. It comes with a six and an eighth inch brace height. It has an ATA speed rating of 342 feet per second. Peak poundages on these bows go from anywhere from 40 to 80 pounds, including 65 pounds, all in 10 inch increments. The draw lengths um, is mod specific this year. and total, it goes from 25 to 30 inches of draw between two different modules. Let off is also let off is adjustable on the mod and it can go from 85 to 80 percent. All right, so first impressions of just looking at the bow, it is an extremely attractive bow. The finish on it is exquisite. There are, the Hoyt normally has a really good finish on their bows. And speaking of finishes, they actually came out with two new colors this year. Um, they brought back buckskin and they also brought in a wilderness green. This one right here is a real tree, kind of one of their classic colors. All right, so let's go ahead and start shooting these bows. All right, so now we're gonna shoot the Hoyt Ventum 30. This bow, from what I've been told, feels very different from previous models. With the binary cam system, a lot of people have been saying it's much improved the back wall. So I'm really curious to see how this guy shoots. Yeah, that back wall is much improved. It's, it still has a little bit of give to it, but it's not nearly as spongy as previous models. It's got a real smooth draw cycle. I'm gonna try and draw it real smooth the next time to see if there are any noticeable humps. The letdown, it had quite a bit of dwell to it, meaning you did have to push it just a little bit, but once it got started, it didn't want to rip your shoulder off, which I really like. Ooh. 
Wow. That had no vibration at all. Like none whatsoever. Very smooth on the shot. Um, for, now, I have a 26 inch draw cycle, so if you have a little bit of a longer draw cycle, excuse me, a little bit longer draw length, you might feel more humps, but when I drew it real smooth, I didn't feel any discernible humps or anything like that. It was just real smooth throughout. You had to maybe get over a tiny hump right before you got into the valley, but it's got a nice valley to it. Real smooth draw cycle. Yeah. Yeah. Even at full draw, this thing balances really, really well without any stabilizers on there. And some of that does have to do with the geometry of the riser. Apparently, this whole deal right out here with the short stop stabilizer is equivalent to rocking a seven inch stabilizer from the normal bushing. But I'm really impressed. You know, Hoyt did made a ton of changes, which is not easy for any bowl manufacturer to do, and I think they really did a good job. There's no hand shock, really smooth draw cycle at my shorter draw length. I'm really curious to see how this guy shoots at uh, during the speed test. All right, so the next bow we're going to be shooting is the Bowtech Solution Short Draw. Okay, so the Solution Short Draw. Uh, kind of the rundown specs of this bad boy. Uh, it comes with a 30 inch axle to axle, a big seven inch brace height, an IBO speed rating of 322 feet per second. Draw length ranges from 23 inches to 28 and a half inches. Nice draw length range there, especially for little shorties like me. Um, poundage, peak poundages come in 50, 60 and 70 pounds. And then the let off is adjustable based on the flip disc on the cam. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about some of the technology that's in this bow. This bow is specifically designed for short draw archers. You can see that in the draw length ranges that it goes down to 23 inches all the way up to 28. So you got a really wide range of draw length options. One thing that I am curious about why Bowtech did this. This is designed for short draw men archers on why they did a seven inch brace height. It kind of confuses me a little bit just because being that I have a 26 inch draw length, I have a shorter power stroke. So that extra bit of brace height um, or that shorter brace height is gonna give me that little bit extra speed. So really quite curious to see how this is going to shoot during the speed test. If it hangs in with all the other bows, then Bowtech really did their homework and did a good job. One other thing before I shoot this bow is I do want to talk a little bit about the flip disc. So this is a piece of technology that has been on the Bowtech bows for quite some years now. Basically what it does is it changes the draw cycle and the back wall a little bit. Right now this is set in the comfort position. So as you might expect, this is going to be a more comfortable shooting bow, smoother draw cycle, more solid back wall, but you're not going to be as fast. When you flip it over to the performance setting, you're going to be gaining about six to eight feet per second, roughly speaking. And this little piece of technology goes across their entire bow lineup. All right, so enough jibber jabber and let's go ahead and shoot this thing. All right, so let's take my, this is my first time shooting uh, the Bowtech Solution short draws. So let's see how it draws. Ooh, that's a real stiff draw cycle all the way through. There's a tiny buzz in that, and it just could be that the bow is so light. Um, it's considerably lighter than that Hoyt that I just shot. But once you put a stabilizer on there, that should go right away. It was a real stiff draw cycle all the way through, and it had a pretty good dump into the back wall. Nice, solid back wall. 
The letdown isn't too bad either. It, it doesn't like uh, it doesn't want to just stay where it is. You can just start letting it down, and it will go, which is nice. got a good string angle, doesn't, I don't need to tip my head down real far, being that of a short drawing, 30 inches axle to axle, it's not too terrible. There is definitely a tiny bit of vibration um, in the bow, but it's not bad. I'm really curious to see how this bow stacks up um, in the speed test, but overall, I'd say it's a good shooting bow, definitely a little stiffer on the draw cycle than I was expecting, but it wasn't bad by any means. All right, so the next bow that I'm going to test out is going to be the Prime Nexus 2. So the specs on the Prime, it has a 32-inch axle-to-axle, comes with a 6-inch brace height, peak poundages range from 40 to 80 pounds in 10-pound in increments, along with 65 pounds. It comes with a wide draw length range of 23 to 30 inches, let off is adjustable on the draw stop. Okay, so the Prime Nexus 2. I gotta tell you, this is a very unique animal compared to the other bows. This has a seven piece string set and a dual track cam system that Prime is known for. One thing, there's just a bunch of things to, that are going on with this bow. One thing that you'll notice is that the grip is in the geometric center of the riser. And what that does is it makes the bow very pointable and adds more material to the bottom of the riser. And one big thing that uh, Prime did to make sure the knock travel was as perfect as they could get is they actually have two different cam sizes. So the top one is significantly bigger than the bottom one and that's just going to improve knock travel. All right, so now we're gonna shoot the Prime Nexus 2. Um, yeah, let's get going with this. I'm really curious to see how this guy shoots being that's a touch longer axle to axle. I think I'm more curious in the void. The diamond or the elite? Very stiff back wall. Nice letdown, just about perfect. Give a little bit of pressure forward and it goes, but doesn't want to rip your shoulder out. A little bit different draw cycle too. There is some, there's a hump kind of in the middle of it. I'll draw it slow to see if I can find it. Pretty good on the shot. Does have a little bit of kick forward, but nothing that a stabilizer can't fix. This one also has just a little bit of buzz after the shot. No, I don't even need a new one, right? No idea. Yeah, it's not bad. Yeah, it's a good shooting bow. Once you throw a stabilizer on there, I'm sure that all the vibration will be taken out. One thing that I did learn from Kellen from Inside Out Precision, that if there is any a little more buzz to just tighten up the screws in the cams or fiddle with your draw stops a little bit to get the cam timing just perfect. So one thing that my wife just brought up is that this bow comes with a seven piece string set and one really cool thing that Prime does is that they'll actually send replacement strings every two year to your dealer once you register this bow. So that's a real, I don't know the quality of these strings, I haven't shot on them for a long enough period, but that's a really nice deal that they're giving uh, to the customer. Another really neat thing that they did, um, I really like the grip on this bow. It's nice and narrow, 
but it has this nice rubber rubber over molding right here and they actually have a bit of technology in between the metal and the rubber it's called aerogel that's one of the bigger changes they did this year apparently aerogel is the same sort of insulation that are in astronaut spacesuits so the idea behind it is that you're not going to be getting a freezing cold hand when you grab this bow when you're hunting um, from a tree stand or in cold hunting conditions. But the nice thing is, even with this rubber overmolding, they still maintain a very comfortable and consistent grip. Overall, it is a nice bow. One thing that I will say is, it, like I said, it did have a little bit of a buzz after the shot. But other than that, it was a pretty smooth shooter. I mean, I do, so now we're going to talk about the Elite Encore. Alright, so the Encore posts an axle to axle length of 33 inches, comes with a 6 inch brace height, an IBO speed rating of 340 feet per second, draw length ranges from a whopping 23 to 30 inches in quarter inch increments. Peak poundages range from 50, 60, 65, and 70 pounds. And let off is adjustable on the module and is adjustable from 70% to 90% using the limb stop and 75% to 90% using the cable stop. All right, so let's talk a little bit about some features of the Encore. This is about the most tinkerable bow you could possibly imagine. There's so many ways to tinker with this bow. Uh, for one thing, you get a ton of draw length adjustment and they come in quarter inch increments, so you can fine tune your draw length. Another thing is on the module, you can actually change the let off if you're using the cable stops from 75 to 90%. With that alone, this would make for an amazing crossover bow because when you're shooting targets with longer stabilizer, a little bit more weight out front, you're gonna want a, just a little bit more, or a little bit less let off, a little bit more holding weight. On top of that, you also get Elite's awesome set technology. That allows you to tune for any arrow using the limb pocket, rather than having to shift the cams. Along with the set technology, you also get their linear tunable roller guard. So that gives you the ability to tune left and right on the roller guard. So this is overall, this bull is very tinkerable. All right, so now let's shoot the Elite and feel for what the draw cycle is like. It's got a very narrow grip. I'd say it's about the most narrow grip out of all the bows I'm testing, even more narrow than the Bowtech. That's a nice aftershock. Um, little to no vibration, pretty quiet. Um, I'm gonna shoot that, I'm gonna draw this bow again, because that was a pretty smooth draw cycle. Right up there, it gets real easy, boom. Nice valley into the back wall. It's got a fairly spongy back wall, but it's still nice and solid. This is with the cable stops. Yeah, that's a pretty good after shot. Real um, kind of stiff for three quarters of the draw cycle, but once you get into that last quarter, it gets really smooth and dips into a nice generous valley. I will say though, with the cable stops, it is probably the spongiest. It's not terribly spongy by any means, but it does have the most give. Now, one nice thing that you can do with this is if you want something a little more solid, you could always switch it up to the limb stop. That's gonna make that back wall rock solid. All right. Onwards to the next one. All right, last but certainly not least for the men's bows, I'm gonna be talking about the Matthews lineup. 
So Matthews came out with two hunting bows that I'm interested in shooting. They came out with their short bow, the 27, and their longer bow, the V331. So let's talk about them individually. All right, so let's start off with the V327. As the name implies, it has a 27 inch axle to axle, a six inch brace height, comes in peak poundages of 60, 65, 70, and 75 pounds, and that's all based on the mod. Draw lengths range from 25 to 29 and a half, and per IBO spec, this bow is shooting a 342. So the V327 and the 31 are very similar bows. One fun fact about these is that they actually have the same riser length as previous year models, meaning the VXR. So the 27 has the exact same riser length as the VXR28, and the V331 has the exact same riser length as the V331. Probably the biggest visual thing that you're gonna see different from these bows is this angled roller guard. This is called the center guard. So what this does is this is set at an angle to make sure that everything a part of this bow lines up with the burger hole. That's gonna, what Matthew says, that's gonna optimize cam timing. And in my opinion, this is also going to mitigate wear on your cables so you won't have to replace your strings and cables quite as much. It might also make the bow a touch smoother, but we'll see about that when we're shooting it. All right, and then we have the Matthews V331. As its name implies, 31 inches axle to axle, six inch brace height, peak poundages of 60, 65, 70, and 75 pounds, again, based on the module. Um, draw lengths are a little bit different with this bow. That's probably the biggest difference between the 31 and the 27. Um, it comes in with 26 to 30 and a half inch draw lengths, and that's a mod base. Um, IBO speed rating should be about the same at 342. Again, brace height about the same. Still has that uh, center guard down there. Um, the other biggest difference is that the riser length is significantly longer, and the idea behind that is to give you an extremely stable shot while still having a very short axle to axle length. All right, now let's go ahead and shoot these bows. All right, now we're gonna shoot the 27 inch Matthews first. One thing I do want to note is that this is probably the lightest bow out of the test. Um, all of these bows are aluminum, but just because this thing is so small, it, it turns out to be extremely lightweight. All right, now let's go ahead and shoot it. spits them out there pretty quick. It is probably the stiffest out of all the draw cycles. Let me draw it real slow and find if there are any humps or anything like that. Stiff, 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 stiff. Get, oop, right there, it gets easy and just dumps it. About what I would expect out of a Matthews. Real stiff for about three quarters of the draw cycle, but it gets pretty smooth right at the end. Um, the string angle, that's something I wanted to touch on with each of these bows. But with this one, um, I would definitely say it is the steepest, but being that I have a 26 inch draw length, it's not terrible. I do have to dip my head down a little bit, um, but again, it isn't bad. One thing to know though is that if you have a longer draw length, to make sure that the string is touching the tip of your nose and crossing your mouth, you might have to raise your anchor point just a touch, which it could be a good thing or a bad thing. Most of the time when you raise your anchor, that lowers your peep height and decreases your trajectory. So you might be retarding yourself a little bit on um, how, how long range you can actually get, especially if you have a sliding style sight. Overall though, it's a pretty smooth shooter.
and last but certainly not least, we're going to shoot the V331. One thing to know at this 26 inch draw length, the 27 has an inch more of cam rotation. The 26 inch mod is the shortest that this one can go, as opposed to the 27, like I said, has a bit more cam rotation. Stiff, 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 really getting easier, and then boom, kind of dumps it. I'd say it's a little bit of an easier draw cycle than the V327, just a little bit more. It's probably just because it's a little bit four inches longer, axle to axle, to be precise. But kind of the same deal, stiff in the beginning, right towards the end, gets real smooth and dumps into a nice solid back wall. Shoot it one more time. Letdown's kind of like what Matthews has been for a while. They've had pretty much the same cross-centric cam system. Um, it, draw, it draws down pretty easy, doesn't want to rip your shoulder out. definitely say that between the V331 and the 27, I like the 31 a little bit better, even if the um, draw cycle is a bit shorter, so I may or may not be getting the same sort of speed um, as the 27, but that will all be revealed in the chronograph test. As for holds of each of these bows, it's really hard to tell because I'm just shooting at maybe five yards. So. I would say for overall, the string angle, probably the best one would be the 33-inch Elite Encore, but this 31 isn't too bad, it isn't too far right behind it. So yeah, all that's left to do to compare these bows is to send them over to the chronograph and fling some arrows through these. All right, hello everybody, this is Brandon from Archery Country. Um, I'm the store manager here and I've worked here for about 17 years. And what I'm gonna do now is the bows that you just seen in the video um, with Jack and his wife shooting, I'm just gonna go through and kind of give one unique thing about each bow. And you can always come into the store and check them out and shoot them for yourselves too. All right guys, we're gonna get on the men's side of it now. We'll kind of go through a little bit of the, all the bows that Jack had shot. So we'll start here with the Ventum 30. And I would say out of all the companies, Hoyt maybe made the most changes from 2020 to 21 this year. Um, entirely new cam system, different riser, but the, the overall feel of the bow is much different than what Hoyt has had in the past. It's one of the smoothest cams drying. Um, it's got a great back wall. It shoots really nice, very little vibration. Um, they actually went to a binary style system this year. So in the past they had their, their yoke style like this. But on their new ones, their flagship model here, the Ventum 30 and their RX series, they have that binary system. It's a very easy bow to tune. We're gonna be using, kind of like the Matthews top hats, we're gonna be using the shim kits on that. Um, but they've been tuning out really nice for us and it's just an absolutely great bow to shoot. So moving on down the line, we got the Solution SD. And Jack has a little shorter draw, and I do as well. Um, Shut up, you have a 27 and a half yeah. inch draw. And that, that SD stands for short draw. Now, they also have their solution, their Solution SS, which are gonna feel very similar, but if you have a shorter draw, you're gonna get a little better performance out of this cam. It's a great back ball. Again, just like on the ladies' bow, Bowtech has a really unique system with their deadlock, being able to spin that axle for tuning. It just, it's effortless to get your broadheads to shoot good, to get your arrows to tune out perfect. So. Bowtech is still very unique in that sense that it's more user-friendly for tuning. Um, but again, it's a great solid shooting bow. So then we have 
the V327, and then also the V331. And I would say for myself, um, the one main unique thing with the Matthews is if you shoot all the bows, personally, I feel like on the shot itself, they're probably the smoothest, you know, less hand shock, and then probably also the quietest. Um, and that is kind of hard to tell from all the bows, but in my opinion, they're the smoothest and quietest ones out there. Um, they make both these are the same cams. You have the 27 and the 31, and that's just for if you're if you're liking a short axle axle bow, a little smaller, a little more maneuverable in the woods, or if you're the guy that likes the longer axle axle. Uh, myself personally, I like the longer one. Just the string angle gets a little tight for my anchor point, uh, but you can always come on in and shoot them and find out if you like a shorter or long bow. One thing I'd like to add. One thing I like to add is I just did this while Brandon was a little bit busy. This is uh, the Ventum 33. If you want to hold on to that one, Brandon, oh, yes. just hold up yeah. the differences in the riser. Like put the risers up next to each other. Right. So yeah, that's a, that is a unique thing with the Matthews. Is it, I mean, if you if you hold up right. those two bows, like at, like riser to riser, the Matthews is longer. Their axle to axle to riser length ratio is a lot longer on the Matthews than any bow. So if you look at this, this is a 33 axle axle height and you Lining have a 31 Matthews. But if you look at the actual riser length, the Matthews is longer. Unbelievable. <laughs> right. Wild. All right, so moving on to the Prime Nexus 2. And now Prime came out with the Nexus 2, the Nexus 4, the Nexus 6. And what you're getting from the 2 to the 4 to the 6 is just longer axle axle. Um, one thing I will say about the Primes, they actually have one of my favorite feeling grips. I love their grip. It's super comfortable. Um, and then obviously if you look at a Prime, what's really unique to them is their two-track cam system here. Um, and that's, that's going to alleviate a lot of your cam lean, um, keep everything in the center. Turns out to be a really good shooting bow, really good tuning bow. But... Very nice feeling grip on that. That's what I probably like the best about their bow. And then you have the new Elite Encore. And it's it, this kind of goes back to maybe more of a, a traditional Elite feel from a few years back. Really nice, solid back wall. Um, it really locks you in, makes you you know accurate. You can't float or sponge on that back, that back wall. Um, and then they actually added something similar to Bowtech with the tunability, it's a little different. It's not back on the axle like the Bowtech is, but it's on the limb and you can pivot that left to right, kind of like on the Bowtech axle to take out your left to right tears. Rod end tuning, paper tuning makes it really easy. So that's a really unique feature that they've added onto their bows now, just to make the tuning more user friendly. Yeah. Well, thank you, Brandon. Yeah. Thank you for yeah, giving us your expert advice, your experts in your expertise in all things archery. Yeah, yeah. If you guys are ever interested in coming in and doing what Jack did, shooting all the bows, finding out which one you like, that's why we're here. Come on into any of our stores and give them a try. Mm -hmm. One. All right. So now it's time for the main event. We're going to be speed testing all these bows. All these bows are set up at 26 inch draw, 70 pounds, and we're shooting a 420 grain Eastern Axis. We're going to start with the Prime Nexus 2. Two fifty-eight. Next one's up is the Hoyt Ventum Thirty. Two fifty-seven. Botex Solution Short Draw. This is the one I'm going to be most curious about because it has the longest brace height. 254, so it's not too far off from the other bows.
Next one up is the Elite Encore. So that's coming in uh, as one of the faster bows. We still have the Matthews to go. Pull these arrows. Good. Mm -hmm. Next one up, V327. Two sixty six. You're good. All right, last but certainly not least, we have the Matthews V331. Two sixty-five, so very similar to the V327. And I'll just in comparing these bows, like the Hoyt, the Bowtech. And the Prime all shot about the same. The um, Elite is about that 260, 259, 260 mark. The Matthews are significantly faster, in my opinion. Uh, both the V331 and the V327 both shot 265, 266. You're good. So for comparative purposes, I wanted to test the speed against my Matthews Vertex, which is a, tw a 2019 model against the brand new ones. The reason why is, for completely selfish reasons, I want to see if there's a performance difference between my bow and the new ones. And that could be a, maybe a reason for you. Maybe you have a little bit of an older bow and want to upgrade. And you want to see what the speed differences are like. So fully broken in bow, you know, I had this bow restrung last year. It's not shooting too much different. The newer ones are shooting maybe four to five feet per second faster. Hey, thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. If you enjoyed what you watched, be sure to give a nice big thumbs up. Did you shoot the new bows for the year? If you did, tell me which ones you shot in the comment section and what did you think about them. Man, I was really impressed with how these bows shot, especially that Hoyt. That Hoyt felt completely different from previous year models. I think Hoyt hit out of the park on this one. And one thing I'd like to note, shooting these bows side by side by side like that really reveals a lot about how bows fit in your hand, how they vibrate, if at, if at all, string angle, the whole lot. And I didn't talk about every little detail in this video, but we're going to mull it over for a little bit. And in the third part of this series, where my wife and I sit down and talk about it, we're going to go through each of the little details, what we liked and didn't like about each bow. Anyway, thank you for watching and catch you next time.